Well, it, it, it is in front of us. We, we have an applicant who, who's proposed 90 units that we think is far too intense, and, and the conditions uh, are, are probably not going to be met. And we have all these health and safety issues. So I, I, my view is that we should um, allow the application, but for a lesser number of units. We've got the, certain, we've got the absolute right to do that. I, I guess the Housing Appeals Committee can say, well, you're wrong, or it's not feasible, or whatever. But uh, uh, you know, my comment is, well, the, de the developer here, the applicant, didn't say it wasn't feasible, and presented no evidence on feasibility of a lesser. And, and that's what I can't understand. It, it, if, if the applicant's position is 90 units, my way of the highway, that's one thing I understand that. If the applicant's position is, well, you know, maybe 90, issue, you know, 90 units does have some issues and problems, um, why don't they come back to us and say, well, give us a lesser number of units and we can solve some of these problems? That's what I thought the process was supposed to be here, and it wasn't. Well, so, let me just say, let me please. Say, I didn't mean to interrupt you. We, what we can do, Ginny, is <clears throat> we can approve the permit. We can approve it with conditions, height, size, site plan, shape, building materials that address issues of local concern. Or we can deny it. If we deny it, uh, we, need to, we need to find that there are no conditions that will adequately address those local concerns. The issue that I have with, uh, with this application is that it, there's not a lot of options here and there's very little testimony, so I don't see where we can draw a line. And while density is the number one issue, it's not the only issue. Um, so, um, although I do agree with you, with everybody and all that's been said about the about the intensity uh, of use being the number one problem or number one issue, um, <clears throat> let me um, the the, cons the concern I have is substituting our judgment for uh, I mean substituting a proposal for another one, and um, I'm I'm not ready. I mean I you know we we could talk. We've been. We've worked, the three of us have been on this board for many years, so um, um, I, I'm happy to have that conversation. But I'd, I'd want to understand a little bit more about, about more than just uh, um, a number of units and, um, and where we can um, begin to dictate that. So for example, uh, would, a lower, would a lower number of units permit the left out? No, we'd say no. We yeah. would put as a condition there'd be no left out. I know, but then we're in a situation. Would, would it make it safer? No, it would have to make it somewhat and safer. And what do you say to the people up in Hillside? It doesn't uh, address that the, issue. The, the, well, it, it doesn't address all of the issues, but you, you know what practically is going to happen here? You deny this application out of hand. Well, so no, no, no 90 units, and, and you don't permit any affordable housing. Then this applicant is going to be arguing to the Housing Appeals Committee, well here the town of Milton says they want affordable housing, <laughs> but they're not allowing it. Mr. Mullins, a distinguished developer here, he, he said the 35 units were feasible. He provided a plan. He shows five buildings. He shows seven units. He shows the interior. Does he provide, it's not his obligation to file an application such as the applicant here, but the, the applicant is going to say to the Housing Appeals Committee, well, they had an application for 40 units, or, or at least a, a, they had evidence of 40 units. They wouldn't even allow 40 units. What, what kind of a Board of Appeals is this? They, they talk a great talk, but they, they don't vote for no affordable housing. For there was testimony. Have... Of course not. Of course not. Do you, do you expect the applicant to, you know, if the applicant came down and said, look, at 70 units, that's the minimum we can do, and we, we debate that, we, we vote it one way or the other, that's, that, that's fine. But the applicant is, for six months, demanded 90 units, and has not changed in that position, which to me leads me to the, to the conclusion that... Um, that's what they want, 90 units, and they don't want 72 units, and they, they want to build these two big buildings irrespective of what, everyone say, what anyone says. And, and I, I, think it's a very, I think it's a mistake for the board just to vote that down. We, we have the right, even if the applicant doesn't say one word, to say 55 units. We're going to allow you 55 units, not 90, 55. I say, well, what do we... What evidence do we have to go to 55 units? 
the, the applicant hasn't given us any evidence that 55 units is good, bad, indifferent, feasible, infeasible. The only evidence that we have here is from Mr. Mullins and from Mr. Lombardi to a lesser extent. But it's evidence at the hearing. So, uh, my question is now. We're not supposed to go out and hire, get the developing development consultants to, uh, to, to give us that information. We're supposed to be listening to the evidence and deciding it and coming to a fair decision. My question is sure. now, by approving some lower number in the 30 to 40 range, um, certainly we're going to have to put, what, what, does, what would this decision look like? Is it going to, are we looking at those waivers that we're all asked for, as, you know, depending upon what Sure, the, of course you are. You're looking at all, all of the waivers, you're looking at the conditions, and you, you would impose a series of conditions. Now, th th they're not going to be as specific as if you, we may like, because we, we don't have an engineering well, firm at our disposal here. Yeah, we, and we don't know what it's going to look like, so it's kind of hard to make that proposal. <laughs> well, it, it, it may very well be. It's, uh, you, you, all I know is we've been dealt a hand, and that's the hand we've got to play. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, and that's the hand I would I would advocate our our playing, and, and uh, if if it gets to the Housing Appeals Committee, as I think surely it will, and, and uh, they think forty five units or forty units is uh, I think forty is the the better number uh, is is economically feasible, then uh, the applicant's going to have to call Mr. James Burke, uh, get him off the golf course, and get him to to redesign the the, the units. And to uh, to design the driveway into uh, which would be a lesser intensity, and, and to to loop the roads. And if if they can't be looped, then you know you'd give give relief. You'd give them some type of uh, uh, relief from those uh, issues that that could. Maybe there are some issues that just can't be solved. I I'm just not an engineer. I can't answer that. But I I, I just think that from from a policy perspective here. Just denying the application, saying it's too dense and uh, the applicant was intransigent and uh, I, I don't think that's sending the right message. But I, I do understand it's not our job to design units yeah. and to design projects. But if the Housing Appeals Committee or some Superior Court judge believes that on the evidence provided to us that that's a step in the right direction. It's, it, it certainly is feasible. Um, you know, may, maybe the applicant would say, well, I really would love to have 55 units. I don't know. You can talk with the team <coughs> about that. Yeah. But it certainly seems to me the Board of Appeals is sending the message that the citizens want affordable housing, that the selectmen want affordable housing, and that the neighbors in, including Mr. Mullins wants affordable housing on this site. And if it has technical imperfections, and I certainly think it does, uh, I think they can be, they can be worked out uh, in, an, in an appropriate way. Through uh, more submittals back to the Board of Appeals? I think it would probably be re remanded back to the Board of Appeals. Well, would that, that, would that, in your scenario, would, is that one of the conditions? No. Would I, it be a site plan coming in so that we would understand what was... What was the subject of it? Well, I, I, I think that if, if the Housing Appeals Committee found that our position was reasonable, I think they would refer it back to the board with uh, the obligation to prepare the type of submittals here that would be commensurate and consistent with a 40-unit project. Um, so I'm not interested in, uh, in protracted litigation, and, and but I, I'm also not interested in, in uh, or, or don't think after having sat in this hearing for as long as we've sat that there's any evidence uh, that the applicant would accept lower than 90 units. I'm, I'm sorry to say that despite the town's need for housing. I'm frustrated we don't understand more about the finances because it seems to me a lot of this surrounds the finances and the town's been asked, almost put in a pretty difficult spot. Um, and, and I find the application of both the MHFA and at the town to be deficient from that perspective. I wonder, John, if um, 
we, we couldn't take some more time on this thought. I'd like to go through the record bef before, right. we, before we got to this. I don't mean to take up everybody's time, but this is a big deal, right? And we've put a lot of time into this. And, and um, yeah, I'd like to re-familiarize myself with that proposal, and I'd like to understand how conditions could be crafted that would address local concern. Because in my, my review of the uh, application, it would be hard to. Um, I suppose it's possible, maybe, uh, at a, with a lower dense, dense site. But uh, the problems with the application are on and off site. And uh, there are a number of off site, or at least a couple of off site issues that haven't been addressed and may not possibly be addressed uh, or could possibly be addressed, but, but not by the board, not without you know, some, some significant thought and a little bit of shoe leather. Uh, in talking to people about how development impacts the, t the town. And, and, and that hasn't happened here. So... Um, right, but how, how are you going to get that type of evidence? Uh, I, I don't know, but... Uh, you I'm, can't. I, it's, I know. It's, I'm outside not the administrative, well, but, it's outside the administrative process. I understand. Process. It's part of the problem. You know, it's, it's, it, but it, it's, it's not of our making. I'm just saying that... Uh, You'd, you'd need to have conditions that address not just the on-site impacts, but the off-site impacts. Because it's the totality or, or, of the impacts or, or, that go to the local concerns. Or, or you, you deal with some of those impacts if, if the project goes forward. If a less dense project goes forward, you deal with some of those impacts. Uh, for example, the, the streets, uh, if people are taking a right out. Uh, Chief Wells certainly knows how to... Uh, rearrange the traffic patterns on the streets and making certain streets one way or alternating or you know, th those are issues which can be it, it just seems to me that it's it's self-evident I think it's intuitive that if you go from 90 units to 40 units the the intensity of the uh, the, the intensity of the issues on the site uh, it, it has to be loosened up the site does have more more room it has to have more ability to accommodate uh, uh, loop lines and uh, less uh, one-way streets. And it, 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 it just being properly designed, it, it has to be a, a, a much more feasible and, and reasonable uh, project. And it's certainly a far less expensive project to, in, in my view, it seems to me that it would be a less expensive project to uh, to develop, and I'm not sure we have to get overly involved in 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 those uh, details, except to take some of the big ticket items that uh, that that may be uh, an impediment to a smaller project, like requiring a boulevard, uh, as, uh, as some of the engineers uh, suggested. Uh, I, I don't think you need to do that if you're dealing with a lesser project. I'm not Jim Burke. I can't design. Uh, entrance ways and roadways. I can suggest you should have paths for the school buses and places to park the cars in the winter time and that type of thing. But it's uh, uh, those are technical things that I think get worked out after after the fact. And I don't, I don't think we should try to take on on the mantle of, of being site designers and developers. That's that's not our expertise. We. We, we, we'd have to be meeting for the next five years to try to do something like that. Mm. That's the applicant's uh, ability. If the applicant is given 45, 40 units to develop and chooses not to do it and wants to walk, then the applicant can walk. If the applicant wants to do a 40-unit uh, development there and it's approved by the Housing Appeals Committee, then they can design the project and, and do it. That's the applicant's burden, not, not ours. And I'm, I'm certainly willing to uh, uh, continue the hearing, give you time to think about it, or do whatever you want to do, do research. Or, uh, but uh, the, 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 the point is, uh, I think this application has to be decided it's somewhere in my notes. I think it's the 29th. It's the 29th. Yeah, by the 29th. So we. we well, that's one of the reasons why I'm suggesting that. I'm suggesting what I'm suggesting. If, if we've got a few days to think about this. I'd like to ask for the time. Of course, sure. And um, read, read this stuff a little bit with this in mind.
Um, but I, I don't know. Jenny, what do you have to say? Um, I would love to get this done by the 22nd. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's fine. I, I, think, I think that's, uh, that's fine. Now, Mrs. Uh, Fitzgerald was kind enough to give me some information. Today's the 13th. We could go over to the 16th or to the 20th. Mm -hmm. Either of those dates good for you, Mr. Mullen? Uh, the 20th, did you say? Yes. 16th or 20th. 16th of the 20th. I'm sorry, I was distracted. That's all right. Uh. Ooh. What's, what's Mr. This must be golf season or something. Mr. Mullen is having some, some difficulties. The 16th or the 20th? I, I, either is equally uh, inconvenient, it? so okay. it's fine. How about you, Jenny? Either. Either, either is fine. Uh, Mr. Cram and uh, Mr. Holland, are you available the 16th or the 20th? Either date. Yes. Okay. Uh, I can't. Does the 16th put too much pressure on you? No. It's fine. Okay. Then uh, is there any other discussion we want to have at this, I don't, at this no. hearing? Do you have anything else you want to say? No. Mrs. King, do you have no. anything else you want to say? Okay. So uh, do you know, uh, Mrs. Fitzgerald, whether the, whether bloat is available on the 16th? Yeah, okay. So uh, do you want to do 7 or 7.30? Uh, 7.30. 7.30 is good. Okay, so we're going to go over to uh, July 16th at 7.30, and we're going to be right here in the Blute uh, conference room and look forward to seeing all of you then with the hope that we can uh, make a decision on this uh, application and, and move forward. So thank you for coming tonight. and. I'm sorry, Ms. O'Donnell, I don't mean to be rude. No, Is that date good for you, too? I should have asked you. <laughs> Just fine. Are you going to miss any singing engagements? Uh, no, no. Social event, but that's okay. Okay. So we're going over to July 16th, 7.30, same, same place. Uh, look forward to seeing you all at that time. Thank you. We're adjourned.